I'm inside and I saw Star Trek the original series Arena. It is directed by Joseph Penby, written by Frederick Brown, and if you haven't seen this episode, I will spoil it for you. This episode starts and the Enterprise is assigned to go to Celtic 3, which is a planet, it has a, it has a Starfleet bases. They go there and they're dismelbadaboo. Wow, destructed. They're destroyed. What was that? Dismantled? What was I doing? I'm trying to go there for the word. Anyway, completely obliterated. They're all gone. They're dead. Nobody's there. However, there's a few, like, a few people go down there, including Kirk, McCoy, uh, Spock. Those three go down there. And it's like, huh, what's happening here? And then like a bunch of shots just come firing. There's a bunch of uh, mortars, artillery. What is it called when you put uh, put a thing into a little tube and then you do a little bit of a fire and then it go Like it, this is the same thing with fireworks. Like the firework balls that go explode in the air. Those are also called that too. What is fun is about this is that they have to do a bunch of evasive maneuvers and I really enjoyed seeing do all the evasive maneuvers. Oh, someone's gonna die. I'm, I'm actually trying to do evasive maneuver myself from the police. That's what it is that I'm trying to do. It looks like they are leaving, but wow, they are very loud. Anyway, so we got them doing a bunch of flips, a bunch of rolls. I like all the rolls that they're doing. Jeez, how many cars do you need? Okay, look, I don't know what the uh, the emergency is. Well, how many cars do you actually need? I hear one fire truck, necessary, but I keep hearing cars go by go by keep going hearing them go by down the road how many trucks do you how many cars do you need do you need like five cars for emergency okay there's a fire truck there i see it it, it go hopefully hopefully this is the last one hopefully you don't need more you have a fire truck and like a bunch of cars you don't need more cars anyway that distracted me sorry about that they're doing a bunch of rolls. I like the rolls that they do. They even have a little bit of a, the same mortar system. They put a mortar in, poof, uh, put some put some light to it, and then poof, it go explode. And it's like, oh boy, that that stopped them. They're leaving. Well, we better go leave too. And so they're now in a ship. They now go vroom in the ship. They keep increasing the speed. It's, it's shown and told how dangerous it is to have speed go very fast. It goes warp seven, we'll go warp seven. We're gonna go to warp eight. Well, they're going to warp eight. Well, they're actually not going to warp eight. It doesn't seem that they're capable of that, but we're going to warp eight and then they just suddenly stop. They just suddenly stop. And it's like, we're hot in the pursuit. And what's interesting about Kirk in this episode is that he keeps saying stuff like, they caused the damage first. Freaking mosquitoes. It's like 50 degrees out there. How, how, out here. Why are there mosquitoes out? Mmm. Mmm. Anyway. So, we have... Kirk is like, we gotta get him, dude. We gotta, we gotta show him who's boss. We gotta shoot him down. We gotta annihilate them. We gotta shoot him. What's fun? Everybody else is like, wait, what? Uh, this is a little bit sus. What are you doing? But because he's captain, they're not going to undermine him. There's a lot of questioning, like, but you know, they have this information, right? And Kirk's like, yeah, I get it, okay? We gotta go catch up to them. We gotta show them who's boss. They mess with us. We gotta show them who's boss. But then their ship just suddenly stops. And it's like, what's happening? And then there's like this rainbow weird thing happening on the screen, on the display. It's like, hey, you guys are you guys are intending violence. I'm gonna stop that. You guys are going to both of your captains are going to be transported to a, a planet where you guys are going to fight it out to the death. Go. And then they do. They're on a planet. 
he just disappears. It's so funny. It, it just disappears like boop, and then they're like, where'd he go? And they're all just like trying to find him. They can't really find him. Meanwhile, we have Kirk and the captain of the ship, with the, which is reptilian. Fun key facts about this species. They are incredibly strong. Uh, we have Kirk who can barely lift a boulder. Boop, chucks that at him. And then he's not damaged at all. He like grabs a huge boulder and then chucks that at Kirk. And I was like, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna cause a lot of uh, damage if he gets hit by that. I hope he didn't get hit by, he didn't get hit by that. That's good. You got a little bit of a try, like a little bit of a, a thing, a recorder thing. What's fun, Kirk is like automatically, it's like, I'm gonna put in captain's notes now. I'm gonna put in captain's notes. Like, oh, this guy is more agile than me. He's more, he's more uh, strong than me, but hopefully I'm more agility and smarter. Meanwhile, this guy is like setting up a trap at the below. Right, and then he's like loudly like sharpening his weapons, and I'm like, dude, this seems like a trap. There's no boulder that just is there uh, at the top of a hill that hasn't already fallen. It seemed like it was intentionally placed there. I feel like Kirk just falls for this guy's trap. He pushes the boulder down. This guy gets hit, but he survives, and then Kirk is running away. Kirk lands in this guy's trap. He gets all tangled up and he gets bouldered and he injures his leg. And I'm like, oh, Kirk, this guy is smarter than you think, okay? He's a captain of a starship. You have to be pretty big brain to even go to space in the first place. Whew. Don't un underestimate this dude. So of course, Kirk is like, well, there's, this guy said there's gonna be some weapons. But there's a lot of mineral deposits here. Ah, there's a lot of, what's well, weird? Interesting. I do like how, like, towards maybe, like, the middle of the battle, it looks like Kirk is losing. Because he can't find a weapon. This guy is stronger than him. And so the guy mediating this fight, he just boops them. You know, boop. They're on the planet now. The guy who did all of that, he's like, hey, you guys can see him now. Because I'm letting you. Look. Look at him, look at him go. And I'm like, oh, okay. I like seeing, uh, showing how clever he is because he's like, hmm, there's a bunch of sulfur here. There has to be something happening. Um, hmm, uh, what is it? What am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? And then like back on the bridge, they're watching Spock, I mean Spock be watching him and everybody else on the bridge be watching him. And Spock be like, oh yeah, gunpowder, make gunpowder. And then Kirk, has like a little bit of a tube, a tunnel tube, found, found some rope, put a bunch of uh, minerals in it. And then here's what gets tense, very tense. Very tense moment, okay? I like this moment. So Kirk is here trying to light a fire. He's trying to do some gunpowder. He finds some diamonds, small diamonds, but they're good for projectiles, which is nice. And I like that Kirk He's like, okay, we got to make this fire. Oh my goodness, I got the fire going. Oh my goodness, the guy's here. I better do this now. And then he gets, he gets the gunpowder going. He only has one shot. And I'm like, oh man, I hope he doesn't miss. And he doesn't miss. The guy is injured. He's pretty injured. Kirk has the upper hand. He's about to be like, oh, I'm going to murder you. And then he's like, wait, no. I'd actually just rather spare him. And then this Metron appears, and Kirk's like, oh, hi. That's what you look like, you kinda look human. Metron be like, oh, I was surprised, I thought you were a savage. You know, within a few thousand years, you guys might be able to hang out with us, be good pals with us. But, mm, you guys got some hope. You guys got some hope. And I'm like, oh, I guess there is some hope. There's some hope for humanity. And then he gets transferred back to his ship. He just boop. And then everyone's like, whoa, what? Where'd you go? What happened? And he's like, you know, we have some promise as a species. And let's go. And I'm like, OK, this is fun. So this is a show of yet another alien that Kirk has to go against. The strengths 
of humans, the weaknesses of humans against an alien life form. I mean, I do like I, in the in the, it's revealed that this thing that Kirk was talking to, the captain could also hear. He's like, "Hey, I've been listening to you the entire time. Like, I know what you're up to." And I'm like, "You really think that you would just be given a recording device? What is you just started using it. I just find that really funny. Kirk just started using that, but other than that, it was pretty fun. This is a fun episode. I like that humanity has hope in Metron eyes. Honestly, this is a good episode. Uh, is there anything else I can talk about? I mean, I like the, I like the reptile guy. He's repulsing. I don't like reptiles that much, personally. Mm, and I do like it is commented on. And there's so many mosquitoes out here. I might as well get get on out of here. So I gotta get this episode. It's a solid like 7.3 out of 10. If you like this review, watch another one. The platform really likes that. If you want a fast track movie review, you can do that for twenty dollar dinos at Patreon.com/ASCPresents. And if you like to help support the daily grindiness of all them daily movie reviews, go to this link tree. Or on the way, you can help support the daily grindiness of all them daily movie reviews. So you can go here. And until next time in Salad Sauce, see you later my Salad Croutons and Vega Bits. Beam me up! Yeah.